Welcome to the U.S. Bank Countdown to Kickoff. Notre Dame Stadium on a windy November night as the Fighting Irish host the undefeated Clemson Tigers. In fans from both teams, they have been turning up the energy all day as we're almost exactly two years since the Irish pulled off an upset in double overtime right here in this building. But here comes Clemson again, top four in the country, carrying the nation's longest active win streak at 14 games. And their quarterback, DJ Uwe Unglele, has started all of those games, been better this year, and enters tonight off his toughest game where he was benched in the second half against Syracuse. And it's a roller coaster season for Notre Dame. But they have played their best against top competition. So can the Irish pull off the upset once again tonight? Jack Collinsworth with longtime Cowboys head coach and Jason Garrett. So Clips' quarterback room, it was unsettled before the bye week. How do you see it after the week off? Hey, Jack, even though DJ had a bad game in his last outing against Syracuse, Dabo Sweeney has made it abundantly clear there's no quarterback controversy at Clemson. DJ is his quarterback. It's easy to see why. He's big. He's athletic. He can throw the ball all over the park. But what scares the Notre Dame defense more than anything else, he's an absolute beast in the quarterback run game. They better get ready to tackle tonight. And Notre Dame, they have won five out of their last six. Shown big game energy at times. What's the winning formula tonight? Jack, Notre Dame has had success when they run the ball and win the time of possession. That has to be the formula again tonight, especially with this win. But it's not going to be easy. This Clemson front seven, they got NFL players all over the place. Two things need to happen for Notre Dame tonight to knock off Clemson. Their quarterback, Drew Pine, has got to make some timely throws, and their defense or their special teams has to make a game-changing play, something they've done here the last couple weeks. Hey, man, nights like this why we love college football. Here come the Irish. that have reached 40 miles per hour for Clemson and Notre Dame who are on the field. Let's go down to the sidelines in Zora Stevenson. Even after DJ Uyangale was pulled for Cade Klubnik a few weeks back at Syracuse, he was still very much involved in the game, cheering on his teammates. You could see him helping the freshman quarterback on the sidelines. Clemson running back Phil Moffa said, you can't make that type of stuff up. It's established that DJ is the leader of this team. Clemson head coach Davo Sweeney told us that DJ had two great weeks of practice. And his expectation is not that just DJ plays well tonight, but that he has his best game. Jack? So Clemson has won the toss. They will defer. B.T. Potter on to send us into the night. And Chris Tyree back deep for the Irish. And Tyree lets the ball drift over his head to the 25. Notre Dame will come. And remember, starting quarterback Tyler Buckner was hurt week two against Marshall. So Pine, he's won five out of six since taking over as the starter. Played his best games against BYU in North Carolina. Still looking for his breakout performance inside Notre Dame Stadium. And will get a huge opportunity for his moment against Clemson. A big part of this game is going to be Notre Dame's ability to run the football, but Pine has to make some plays throughout the ball game. It's a tough night to do it. It's windy. Wind in his face. We'll see if he can spin the ball and throw it where he wants to. Logan Diggs starts the game at running back. Oh, 
Hine gives, and Logan Diggs trying to work the middle and able to pick up three going straight ahead. The players to watch tonight. Coach, how do you see it? Michael Mayer, arguably the best tight end in the country, will be a big part of it. Hand the ball to the big guy, Audrick Estime. The defensive front of Clemson is outstanding. Miles Murphy will be a first-round pick. Barrett Carter back after injury, an outstanding rusher and cover guy. He'll be matched up with Mayer throughout this game. And Mayer liked the idea of that matchup. And Dabo Sweeney said that he can cover anybody. He said, okay, we'll see come Saturday night. Pistol look here on a second and six. Pine fires directly to Michael Mayer, who has that first down rumbling forward. Michael Mayer lined up on the left-hand side. He just pushes up and runs a little out route. He settles down in the zone. Drew Pine puts it on his face mask. That's been the formula. Run it and then throw it to 87. And Notre Dame has been using that check with the sideline to get calls in all season long. Coach Reese mentioned that it would be different tonight. Wanted to huddle a bit, get to the line of scrimmage quickly, and then snap the football. An early look at it here. Give it to Logan Diggs, and he's trying to work the face of that defense, and he'll just gain two. Jack, it's a speed break. That's where Notre Dame's receivers align in their formation. Everybody else stays in the huddle. They sprint out of the huddle. They get to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball. Clemson does an excellent job identifying the formation that the opposing offense is in and adjusting their defense accordingly. Notre Dame's going to try not to allow them to do that tonight. Pine hands away. Logan Diggs once again. And it was Audric Estime that had the huge game a week ago. 20 carries he had, 123 yards against Syracuse with a pair of touchdowns. Marcus Freeman, Dabo Sweeney, both of these guys known for being great recruiters. Third down and four for Notre Dame. Estime into the game. Pine drops. Trying to scramble away, and Pine goes down. The talent in front of Clemson gets home. It's Miles Murphy with an early sack. This Clemson defensive line, they have a lot of talent. This is the left-hand side of Notre Dame's offense. This is Joe Wald against Murphy. It's a coverage sack. Pine has to pull the ball down. Alt's in good position, but as this play extends, Murphy's able to come off. This guy's relentless. Miles Murphy, he's one of those guys. He'll go high in this draft. He's got elite pass rush skills. He showed it right there. John Sott, the transfer out of Harvard, on to punt into this wind, and it is a wobbly punt. It settles right there at the 26-yard line. So the Clemson defense rises to the challenge early, gets a stop. Here comes DJ out next. Awesome. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. By Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA, and by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. And these fans, they have been holding down the parking lots, turning it up since 7 a.m. They know what this game is all about. Many of them here for that 2020 matchup as well as DJ Uwe Ungalale makes his way onto the field. Had a career day in that 2020 start inside Notre Dame Stadium, throwing for over 400 yards. And remember, he was benched in the last game against Syracuse. Dabo Sweeney standing by his quarterback, making no doubt about the leader of this team. DJ swings it out to his tight end, Davis Allen, and a nice pickup on the first play of the game for Clemson. Penalty marker comes out at the conclusion. Holding, offense, number 80, 10-yard penalty, first down. We're going to get Bo Collins with the infraction. Nobody uses RPOs, run pass options more than Clemson does. Good completion to the flat. Collins, aggressive. You get the hands outside and you grab that cloth, they're going to call it every time. So 
So now on first and 20, out to Will Shipley, but the defense there immediately. It's Cam Hart from his corner spot who shot through and dropped Shipley. This is what Clemson does. They attack the perimeter with these bubble screens. Shipley just getting whiffed right now. Critical for the Notre Dame corners and their nickel back to show up. You have to get off blocks and you have to tackle. A good start for the Irish outside. So now a second and very long. Get it to Shipley once again. And another flag comes out. Brandon Joseph made the stop. And here comes the call. Holding offense under 80. 10 yard penalty, second down. Two penalties to start on Bo Collins. On the first three plays of the ball game, again, it's about the perimeter. Cam Hart, the field corner, cuts inside. There's Dabo getting on Bo, teaching him how he's got to use his feet and his eyes and anticipate that corner darting inside. He's in bad position. He holds. Good play by Hart. A good start by Hart. Been involved in two of these plays early on in this ball game. Bo Collins checks out of the game. E.J. Williams in for it. Handed here. It's Will Shipley and Shipley trying to go up the middle and not much there. Third and very long upcoming for Clemson. It's an outstanding start for the Irish defense. Just nothing bad in this situation now. Third and extra, extra long. Make sure you keep these Clemson receivers in front of you. Rally and tackle and no penalties. That has to be their mindset on defense. Call it a third and 22. This crowd on their feet already. Uyunglele complete. It's Davis Allen who has stopped up quickly. Fourth down upcoming for Clemson. It's a great start for this Irish defense and a good decision by DJ right there. You're not going to make the third and extra long. Get a completion. Give your punter a little bit more room and try to play a little bit of field position here. Don't turn a bad situation into a disastrous one. Good decision by DJ. Get back into it. Brings Aiden Swanson on the punt and Brandon Joseph back deep to receive for the Irish. Remember, Notre Dame has been very good at getting a hand on these punts. And this one is blocked once again, and the Irish have it. Botello gets a hand on it. Prince Colley has the football. And into the end zone goes Colley. There's your game-changing play, Jack. <laughs> I have never seen anything like it. It's their sixth block punt of the season. <laughs> In just over eight games, they get one more. What a start on defense. What a start in the kicking game. This place is about to erupt. Special teams coordinator Brian Mason has been sensational. As a penalty marker comes out before Blake Groupie's extra point. They have block punts against Marshall, Stanford, UNLV. They had two of them. Syracuse as well. Now you can throw Clemson on that chart. Marcus Freeman told me every starter on Notre Dame's team has to play on at least one special team. So some of their best players are out there. Offside. 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 Defense number 11. Half the distance to the goal. Replay the try. And trust me, Jack, when you start blocking punts at the rate that Notre Dame's blocking punts, they want to be out there. They want a piece of the action. And so now, Groupie, for the extra points. And Groupie has it. Punt blocks have been the story of the season for Notre Dame. Yeah, let's redo the basement. Hello, home movie. See, it's streaming on Peacock.
Premier League mornings are on USA. Tomorrow, crosstown rivals meet in a London derby. Chelsea versus Arsenal tomorrow, 7 a.m. Eastern on USA. Watch parties in South Bend and Clemson as well. The linebacker lounge. Then you go down to Clemson, the back streets, pub and grill. Have shots from both throughout the course of this game. And you see the wind playing a factor. Got to bring in the holder here for the kickoff. I sure do. It will be a factor in this game. So it plays like a block punt for a touchdown. And each team's ability to run the football will be the difference going forward. Zach Yoko sent it deep. And Will Shipley, extremely talented tailback for Clemson. Back deep trying to track down that football. And cannot. Let's go back to that block. You know, college has used this spread punt. There's a lot of open gaps in here. Okay, here's a good look at it right here. This is Batello, and it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on those up backs. Those guys in the blue jerseys have a running start. It's a tough block. Batello reaches out. It's textbook. He blocks it off the punter's foot. Full extension and awareness to finish it off. And there's Coach Mason. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Six block punts. In eight games. Wow. Botello, two sacks against Syracuse as well. So he has been on his game. Uyunglele swings it out. This is Antonio Williams, the freshman. And look at the moves by Williams, who gets it out to the 40 yard line. Let's go down to Zora on the sideline. We saw Notre Dame special teams coordinator Brian Mason in practice this week, animated and intense, just like he was a few minutes ago on the sidelines. Coming into tonight, Notre Dame had five block punts this season, and head coach Marcus Freeman challenged his group to continue to go for it, even though teams know it's coming. I think we could say challenge accepted. Now six block punts this season. Zora, he was in complete control of that group. So a first down here for Clemson. Back to the pass game. And this is Bo Collins who's trying to make up for his two early penalties. And he will pick up three. Jack, if you look at what Clemson has done up to this point, they've run five plays on early down so far. And every one of them has been to the perimeter. They've got a couple holding penalties outside that put them behind the chain. But this is what they want to do. It's a run pass option. They do it more than anybody in college football. If they don't like the run, they spit it wide. And they love throwing it to Antonio Williams. He's a fantastic space player. Bring Jake Brinning stool in motion. And they will flip the football out that way to Will Shipley. And Shipley able to lower that shoulder and gain the edge. It was Jordan McFadden who threw a great block from his left tackle spot getting out in space. It's the same kind of play. They're in the, in the pistol alignment, and they just flip it wide. Down, down, and let's just get to the edge. Shipley's got dynamic speed. Get him on the perimeter. Another big game. Right up on the ball. Give it to Shipley once again. He's going right towards the middle of the defense and not much there. There's just a lot of respect for that Notre Dame front seven. The physicalness of that group. So they want to make them run side to side. They don't want to run the ball at them too much. Make them defend 53 and a third yards. That's the plan. They still got to mix the inside run. But they want to get outside. Now shotgun on a second and nine. We'll flip this to Williams, and Antonio Williams has no space. He is drove down by JT Bertrand. JT shed a blocker straight into the backfield and made the stop to set up a third and long. JT Bertrand is so well prepared studies and he's so instinctive he sees this fly sweep come in this fast motion he runs through the gap and simply chases it down excellent job by Osafa Mensa setting the edge Turner Williams back inside Bertrand makes another play for the Irish loss of five and backed up again on third down on the Tigers here's Uri under the way to the outside is tight end. It's Davis Allen who's trying to plow ahead, and he will be stopped up short of that first down in the decision here for Dabo Sweeney. Jack, it's really a good play by Davis Allen. You catch the ball in the flat, and you go north and south. Okay, force Dabo Sweeney to make a decision here. Okay, we can go for it on fourth down. I'm going to make it manageable for you, coach. He makes it fourth and four. Gonna be a hard night to kick a field goal in this situation. Guns on the ball, and they're going for it. Fourth down and four.
DJ drops, protected well, fires deep and over the head of Collins, incomplete. The Irish will take over on downs. This building is ready to erupt after that start. Irish lead, 7-7. Want updates on the action? Just tell Siri, show me college football scores. Great look at the grotto on the campus of the University of Notre Dame. And remember, Tennessee lost to Georgia. Number one goes down. So this is a monster game for Dabo Sweeney and Clemson. Hands it off. It's Logan Diggs. And can he get the edge just for a pickup of three trying to work the outside? Great look at Dabo Sweeney, guy that I've gotten to know through the years in our interaction, talking about Clemson football players going to the NFL. And he's one of the most positive people I've ever been around. And there's no doubt all these coaches and these players who are part of this Clemson program love playing for that guy. Success speaks for itself. It creates an incredible environment for everybody to be their best. One more time. Hands off to Logan Diggs. Similar looking play. It'll set up a third and five here for Tommy Reese. Another early third down for this Notre Dame offense. Miles Murphy came up big on that last one with a sack. Tommy Reese has to be aware of this Clemson pass rush. This ball's got to get out of Pine's hands quickly. Looks like man to man, looks like pressure. Here's Pine looking directly through the middle, and that pass is deflected. It's Trenton Simpson. And remember, this defense leads the country with 15 batted passes. Make that 16. And it has been a big issue for Pine, who is undersized. Tigers are getting their calls up with great success. But Simpson looping inside as linebacker pressure. This is what Clemson does well. They rush the quarterback. They sack the quarterback. But when they can't get home, they get the hands up and they knock it down. A nice play by Simpson there. Good job by Clemson getting off the field on third down. John Sott on to punt and Antonio Williams back deep to receive. And this is a friendly roll for Notre Dame that travels inside the 15 and settles right there at the 13-yard line. So Clemson backed up and down seven in the first quarter. Time for Above the Rest, brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Takes us back to 2020, number one Clemson, number four Notre Dame, Kyron Williams, the go-ahead touchdown. And the defense would hang on for Notre Dame. It was a terrific night for DJ Uyunglele. Coming in for Trevor Lawrence, who had a positive test. Career game for him, over 400 passing yards, and this time just has to get rid of the football quickly. He runs directly into Maris Leofau, who's still dragging Moffa backwards. Yeah, sometimes what happens in games is players on one team hear about players on another team being talked about. This Clemson defensive line, and don't think this Notre Dame defensive line didn't hear about that. The guys in the blue shirts are knocking the guys in the white shirts off the ball. They're winning the line of scrimmage. I think they heard all the talk about how great Clemson's defensive front is, and they're showing them who they are. DJ gets it out. It's Will Shipley who's trying to spin away, and he cannot. Benjamin Morrison, the true freshman out of Phoenix, Arizona, made the stop for the Irish. Jack, a big takeaway early is the corners of Notre Dame shutting down the perimeter game of Clemson. Cam Hart earlier, there's Benjamin Morrison, the freshman, shedding blocks and making tackles. Third and long for Clemson. Looks like Notre Dame's playing some zone. Third and long has been a familiar down in this first quarter. We underway. 
Drops, fires. It's Davis Allen, and Davis Allen brought down once again by Benjamin Morrison, who stuck the big tight end and brought him down on the spot. What an unbelievable start for this Notre Dame defense. They've essentially won almost every play up to this point, and they've made the critical stops on third down. Clemson has find themselves in third and long. Notre Dame playing soft zone. Benjamin Morrison is a slight guy, but he's willing, sticking his nose in there. And don't think that doesn't earn respect from his teammates. Irish have been fantastic on the defensive side of the ball. And now here's another one of those punt blocks. <laughs> They're coming after him again, and this is a low punt that has some roll on it, a great roll for Clemson, and now it's going to be picked up by Brandon Joseph, and he just takes it back out to the 20-yard line. Yeah, I remember talking that 2020 game we just mentioned coming out of the break with Tommy Reese. He said it's his favorite football memory, period. First year as offensive coordinator, Ian Book was his quarterback. He has that call sheet framed at his house still. He said, I've put so much work into that game plan, got the win. A day I will never forget. My career has not gotten better than that night. Jack, so much fun talking to Tommy and to Drew Pine. Drew Pine was a backup to Ian Book. And Talked about how the energy was just special and something they'll never forget. Couple running backs in the game. Tyree in motion will get this one up the middle to Eskimo, and he is close to the line to gain. And may mark him just short before he's brought down by Jalen Phillips. And this is what Notre Dame has to do. This is just estimate in the middle of the defense. Make these elite pass rushers play the run. Notre Dame guys coming off the ball. Hitting him in the mouth. When Estime gets his shoulders square going north and south, he is a load and hard to tackle. That has to be the formula for Notre Dame tonight. Well, Marcus Freeman wanted to get more length into the game at wide receiver. You see Tobias Merriweather and Colsey check in for Notre Dame. Back to the ground. It's Estime, and he has enough for that first down. Notre Dame using some different tempo. They've been in the huddle. They've used that sprint break where they get to the line of scrimmage quickly. They've been on the ball. So one of the ways you tire down an elite defensive front is you control the tempo. You go fast. You go slow. You break the huddle quickly. That's what they're trying to do to take the edge off of that front. Empty look here for Pine in a late shift. Brings Estime back into the backfield along with Chris Tyree. Pine fakes it to Estime, swings it out. This is Chris Tyree who's down the sideline and steps out just before midfield. Jack, the word is implementation. There's always going to be tempo. There's always going to be a shift or a motion. There's Tyree. Fake it to Estime inside. Tyree sneaks across to the flat. Drew Pine pulls it out, puts it on that front number. Tyree's an excellent space player. Good job by Tommy Reese getting him doing what he does best. First quarter winding down, and Marcus Freeman content to take that quarter, put it in his pocket, and move on to the second. It was the block punt, touchdown. Starting to run the ball are the Irish. 7 nothing Notre Dame on a South Bend Saturday night. The flyover was sensational. A lot of football to be played. Notre Dame has the football and the lead. Peacock's got. Coverage is brought to you by Geico. And remember, Clemson had a slow start against Syracuse as well before the bye week, able to come back in that game. They're used to winning close games, late finding ways to win. They need a spark here on the defensive side of the ball. Here's Estime, and he is stopped up. There's a spark. It's Jalen Phillips in the backfield making the play. 
So how do they get things going here tonight just as they did before the bye week? Yeah, Clemson has played well on defense so far. They've gotten off the field on, on some third downs. The biggest issue in this game is they haven't gotten started on offense, and that's all about the miscues. A couple holding penalties, some minus plays, then you get the block punt. For Dabo, he just has to settle everybody down over there, take a deep breath, and just go execute plays in all three phases of their team. It looks like they're starting to do that now. Two tight ends in the game for Notre Dame. They will run that tight end screen with Michael Mayer for a nice game to set up a third down at seven. And these are not easy for Notre Dame, especially against this Clemson front that rushes the passer so well. You'd like to be able to get to the back end. Clemson's secondary has struggled a little bit, particularly with the deep ball. But you get yourself in these third down situations, those guys up front, Miles Murphy, they're in track stances now. They're in track stances. They're rushing the quarterback. You'll see the matchup between he and Joe Walt here. Be a good one to watch. And Tobias Merriweather in motion. Pine fires as he's hit. And that throw was sail. He's looking for Tobias Merriweather. It was Tyler Davis who forced the pressure. And the throw went high. The thing with Clemson's defensive front is they got a ton of guys. We've talked about Murphy, but they're inside guys. Tyler Davis, he's a big athletic guy. They're going to win the matchups inside. They try to create one-on-ones, and then they try to run games. They twist. They, they stunt. They ju they're just hard to block. So if you have to hold the ball, they make it tough on you. This is John Sott who sends this punt into the wind, and that football drifts into the end zone so at the 25 yard line is where Clemson will take over and this becomes easy coaching for Dabo because these are plays you just can't happen so you simply talk to your guys about hey we appreciate how zealous you are with trying to block don't hold the guy okay, obviously the punt was a, was a real issue for them you saw in the next punt they used kind of a, a rollout rugby type punt to try to alleviate that Notre Dame pass rush I'd like to see them, they've been a big perimeter team, I'd like to see them run the ball at Notre Dame a little bit. Again, try to take the edge off of Notre Dame's defensive front. Here comes a run, just like you said, it's Will Shipley, who Dabo Sweeney called the heartbeat of the offense, the heartbeat of the team. He's a 4.0 student, track star in high school, and that's where all the recruiting began for him. Now he takes himself over to the sideline. And again, this is Shipley just right in the middle of the defense. Let your guys up front come off the ball and hit the blue shirts in the mouth a little bit. It doesn't always have to be to the perimeter. Give your guys a chance to get in the ball game as well. Good drive started for Clemson. And Will Shipley getting some attention over on the sideline. Phil Matha checks in. Uyunglele fires. He's looking deep. Wants E.J. Williams but cannot connect. Benjamin Morrison over there in coverage. Benjamin Morrison, the freshman, out there by himself. It's just a go-route down the sidelines, and Morrison, mature beyond his years. He stays on the high shoulder. Good discipline with his hands. It's good coverage by the youngster. Hand this to Phil Maffa, and Maffa is stopped up, just trying to spin his way forward for a couple. Maffa and Shipley are good complements to each other. Shipley the faster player. He likes to get to the perimeter. Maffa more the downhill runner, 230 pounds, likes to punish the defense. And now Clemson finds himself in his third and seven. Looks like man-to-man -man by Notre Dame. Clemson 0 for 3 on third down. Notre Dame showing pressure, and they will bring pressure, and that pressure gets home. It's Howard Cross who spun him to the ground. Again, there's Notre Dame front accepting the challenge. We can rush the passer too. Al Golden dials up some heat.
great some one-on-one -on -one matchups. And this Howard Cross, relentless is his middle name. <laughs> he just keeps coming. He is nonstop. His old man was a teammate of mine with the Giants, an outstanding tight end for a lot of years. And the Irish were rushing that part hard once again. Did they get a hand on it? They got awfully close. Ryan Mason, the most aggressive special teams coordinator in the country. That was Isaiah Foskey. He's already got a couple. Michael Mayer, he has been putting it on the reel all season long. I love when you say that, Jason Garrett. <laughs> These are the numbers. Notre Dame tight end ranks first interceptions, first in yards, touchdowns tied for first with Ken McAfee. And then the FBS tight end ranks through week nine. So entering tonight, the targets first, receptions top, you name it. He has been tremendous. Mayor's got a heck of a reel, doesn't he, Jack? Sure does. By far the most targeted tight end in the country. Good goes to Logan Diggs. Good blockers out in front. Jarrett Patterson leading the way for Diggs. And Diggs got close to the line to gain just one yard shot. What's the left guard here, Jared Patterson? It's an old school power play from the pistol. Halfback lines align the, behind the quarterback. Patterson pulls. Diggs gets in behind him. Physical run game at this Clemson defensive line. That has to be the formula. Notre Dame's executed it well up to this point. Look for sprint break right here. On the ball quickly, directly back to Logan Diggs, and more success straight ahead. And you mentioned all the numbers for Michael Mayer, all the receptions, but what was Mayer talking about with us yesterday? I sat down with my position coach. I said, I want to be better as a blocker, and he has been great in the run-blocking game the last few weeks. There's an old-school football player. When you talk to this guy, he's got old-school confidence to him. He just looks like one of those guys that, that played a long time ago. He's edgy. And he caught 11 balls against BYU, and all he talked about was, I did not block as well as I needed to block. He was talking about it again yesterday. They take great pride in being part of a successful run game at that tight end spot. Play action for Pine. He's looking down the field, and Pine unable to connect. Looked like that ball might have been batted away. You had Trotter, who was in there in the face of Pine. This Clemson front is tough, rushing the passer. We call that a cross dog. Two linebackers coming inside and crossing. A lot of heat inside. Looks like Zeke Correll misses his block. Trotter comes off and affects Pine. Man-to-man -man coverage outside. Missed opportunity, but it has to be protection first against this outfit. Play action and rolling is Drew Pine, and that pass is dropped. It's Lorenzo Styles who had some space and just couldn't hang on. These are the plays that Notre Dame simply has to make. They go from second and ten. They're going to be third and very manageable. Movement throw. Puts it right on Styles' face mask. you got to make the gimme plays. you got to make the layups. Third and ten. A completely different planet than third and three. Drew's got to think about field position as well here. Doesn't always have to be the first down. Give yourself a chance to kick the field goal. Pine hands it off. It's Andre Estime. Estime lowers that shoulder after picking up the first down. Barrett Carter finally got him onto the turf. Absolutely love the call by offensive coordinator Tommy Reese. It's just Estime. He's going to bounce this play outside. Again, showing the lateral quickness. When that number seven gets square and goes north and south down the field, he's tough to tackle. I think Tommy Reese was trying to get him into field goal range. Explosive run, first down, and the roll in the high red zone. Pistol look on the ball quickly. Here's Drew Pine. 
protection is excellent. Pine taking all day. It just throws the football out of bounds. That was Miles Murphy who finally got the hit on him. Jack, Notre Dame loves to use 13 personnel. Three tight ends in the game. Look at them. Tight end, tight end, tight end. It's a run personnel grouping. So when you have a run tendency from that big personnel grouping, it's a great opportunity to get the defense to play run and you throw the ball. Clemson knows that. Clemson defends the tight end well. And they still can rush the passer. They've knocked him around pretty, pretty good here in the first half. Hine hands it off. Michael Mayer gets the block in front. And nothing there for Logan Diggs. Another third down coming up for Tommy Reese to think about. And really important for Tommy Reese and for Drew Pond to manage the situation. Where are we? 24-yard line. Left hands. Wind is a factor here. You can't go backwards. We have to have a positive play to preserve the field goal opportunity. And that front of Clemson showing pressure. Sure are. <laughs> and they drop out. Now Pine, that pass is deflected once again. So that's what this defensive front does. I mean, seven of their front seven very well may play in the NFL. And what they do best, they get those hands up. And Pine is 5'11", listed at 5'11", 198 pounds. Tyler Davis, 6'2", 300, said, give me that football. The individual matchups across the board, they favor Clemson. They are awfully good rushers. And you add the pressure element, and then when they don't get home, they block passes they can be really disruptive so groupie with the wind at his back and groupie missed it that wind is headed directly toward touchdown jesus same direction that groupie is kicking hit a low liner and it was a drifter Was and live results as the votes come in Tuesday at 6 streaming on NBC News now and Tomorrow night Derek Henry and the Titans face off against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs coverage begins 7 Eastern on NBC and Peacock We're at football night in America. Hey, you are looking good on the chart there coach Heading up to Stanford, Connecticut. Sure am. Free game show and a great game coming up sure. uh, on Sunday Night Football. Study in contrast Chiefs Titans be fun to watch. And speaking of great running backs, Will Shipley checks back into the game for Clemson. Give it to Shipley, and there is a lane up the middle. It's Maris Leofal hanging on to make the tackle before him. That's a nice pickup, though, first by Shipley. Clemson has to quiet this game down. they got to quiet the crowd down, quiet the front down. That's a good way to do it. Right back to the line, right back to Shipley in a first down. And the DJ Uli Ungle he's 9 for 11. 0 for 2 on deep passes so far tonight. 9 for 9 for 41 yards on all other passes. And remember that Cade Klubnik came into the game as a reliever against Syracuse prior to the bye week. And he led Clemson back to the win. The true freshman, very special, Dabo Sweeney said. Excited about him in the future. DJ, play action, swings it out. It's Specter, and it goes straight through his hand. So what you see from Klubnik coming in against Cuse? The issue for DJ against Syracuse were the turnovers. He turned the ball over three times. Dabo said, DJ, I love you. I love my team more. I'm not, not going to let you turn the ball over a fourth time. And he went to Klubnik, and for a freshman to come in, and manage that game the way he did was really impressive. But DJ is their guy. He's been the quarterback on this 14-game win streak. That was going to give him every chance to finish this ball game tonight. Swing this out. He's a ship with that pass was behind, behind the line of scrimmage, and it goes out of bounds. So that will be a loss of yardage. Looked like that throw was behind the line and the refs having a conversation that will mark it that way. 
Jack, we talked about the wind being a factor. I think it was a factor on that play. It was just a little bubble screen out to Shipley. One thing you notice about DJ is the ball doesn't always spin cleanly out of his hand. A little bit of a wobble. The wind caught it and knocked it backwards. It's a huge play. They find themselves in third and extra long right now. Again, he's got to manage this situation. Understand you're only down a touchdown. There's a lot of football to be played. Hand off here. It's Shipley, and Shipley is brought down by JT Bertrand. And fourth down once again for the Tigers. Jack, easy in that situation as a coach and as a quarterback to get a little antsy. Oh, we got to do something. We got to make a play. On third and 17, we take a shot, and then you turn a bad situation again into a disastrous one. Hand the ball off, play some field position here, punt it the other way. Notre Dame's offense has not done that much. But here's this punt rush team. <laughs> here they come once again. It's a low rider getting that punt off quickly. Is Aiden Swanson, and it settles right there at the 22 yard line. So Most excited playing ball. It sure is. We have seen this wind affect the game so far, but the Notre Dame defense rising to the occasion. Irish on top. Monday, it's the last leap before the new year. Don't miss the action-packed bottom leap fall finale. Monday, 10-9 Central on NBC and streaming on Peacock. It's a great look at the lake and the Golden Dome right there behind it. Chris Tyree in motion, and they hand it to Andrick Eskimo, who bursts through the line of scrimmage and into the secondary for the first down before Jones brought him to the ground. Downhill running game. Run north and south at this defense. It's been the best play for Notre Dame all night long, and give it to the big guy. They list him at 230. He's bigger than that. Look at the athleticism and the stiff arm and the finish. This is how Notre Dame has to play. Tremendous emotion. We used to have a guy named Zeke Elliott in Dallas. Feed me. That's what estimates that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Had that huge stiff arm against Cuse as well. Now they go to the speed stretch. Chris Tyree. Tyree tries the outside. And he'll pick up 10. Time now for a grip on the game presented by Tire Rack. Look at those numbers right there. The rushing differential for Notre Dame when they win the battle of rushing yards like they did in all five of their wins. Look at that. Astronomical. That's what they're trying to do here tonight. They play their best football when they run it. They control time of possession, and they've done that. Look at that. 36-plus minutes time of possession. That's the formula for them. They're trying to execute that tonight against this Clemson ball club. Pistol look. Football goes directly back to Chris Tyree. And remember, this is the same offense that started the game against Syracuse by going fullback dive, fullback dive, tight end sneak on the first series of the game. And they made a point about it. We're coming right at you. This is mono imano old school football. We're in attack mode on offense. And it's interesting. Syracuse was small up front, so they felt like they had a physical advantage. The biggest thing with Clemson's front is they're active, they're athletic, they're up the field guys, so they have to be physical with them to quiet the game down, and so far so good for the Irish. Pine gives. It's Chris Tyree, and Tyree runs into Keith McGuire, who makes the stop. It'll be a third and short for Notre Dame. One of the tricky things that happens when you run run you get into these third and threes and everyone says boy It's third and three boy. That's easy. We'll convert that. It's hard. These are sticky situations for Notre Dame Is it too far to run it? Uh, I don't know Are they gonna play man-to-man? -man? Do you have to win outside? Yeah, so Giving Drew Pine some options Some run pass option could be a good choice for Notre Dame in this situation. Notre Dame, one for five on third down to the ground game they go, just as you said. Andrick Eskimo rumbling forward, has that first down and has more. Third and three, no problem. Run it again. 
Notre Dame has done a good job dressing some of these runs up, but it's the same formula. It's all downhill. It's the fly sweep motion. Mayer sliding back, blocking the defensive end. Blue shirts knocking the white shirts off the ball. Estimates feeling it. This Notre Dame offensive line liked the challenge of everybody talking about the Clemson defensive front so far living up to it. One more time with the big running back and odds with Estime. That's Phillips making the stop after a pickup of five. Again, something Tommy Reese told us is we can't let these guys get comfortable and see the formations that we're in. So if you go back and watch Notre Dame throughout this first half, there's always a shift, there's always a motion, there's always a movement. Don't let Clemson see it and kind of Rolodex it. Okay, let them see the formation late and snap the ball. It's been effective for the Irish so far. Pine gives, it's estimated again. He breaks through the initial tackler. And he gets close to the line to gain. They will mark him just short and set up a third and very short. And there's a lot of running backs. Three running backs that rotate in for Notre Dame. All three of those running backs over 90 touches. The only team in the country to meet that mark. See the other two over on the sideline as Estime goes to work. And they're on the ball again. Seven straight runs on this drive for the Irish. Pine gives Estime as that first down. Jack, that play they ran right there is a play that people in football call duo. Double team blocks at the point of attack, hand it to the big guy. Tight ends are all a part of this thing. In the last two weeks, Notre Dame has run this play in different versions 37 times. So Clemson knows it's coming. Critical situation, they run it anyway, and they get the first down. Now Chris Tyree back into the game. Thank you to Tyree. Pine, flushed, escapes, has some space. And Pine is going to gain the first time with his legs. Don't see it very often every now and again before Nate Wiggins makes the stop for Clemson. And a play like that is critical for a guy like Drew Pine in this situation. They're going to run the ball. There's some pressure outside. He's not going to have time enough. You find some softness. Make a play with your feet. Pine fakes it on the roll. He's complete to Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer with room goes vertical. And Michael Mayer takes it inside the five-yard line. When you run the ball as effectively as Notre Dame has, you have to use that run game to your advantage. They go naked bootleg, spit it out to their best player. They're knocking on the door. First and goal at the five. Pine is going to keep it himself around the outside. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Michael Mayer through the block. Jack, run it, run it, run it some more, but then use the compliments. First is the naked bootleg, and now it's the quarterback run. There's Mayer, the All-American. They target him more than anything. He takes great pride as a blocker at the point of attack, and on plays like that, Estime's feeling it. Drew Pine's feeling it too, Jack. We'll see if Blake Groupie's feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> Groupie coming up the miss. Oh, getting back on track. Great the extra point. So just before halftime, we have a penalty marker that came out right after the extra point. Got the cheerleaders already on the field. We may have to head back over to the sideline and see what this call is. Personal foul. Leaping defense number five. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Timeout.
Coming up on the All-State Halftime Report, Catherine Tappen with alumni analyst, New York Giants safety, Julian Love, and former All-Pro, LeVon Kirkland. Had a great visit with Kirkland, with Love as well. Can't wait to hear their thoughts on this first half. There they are. Just an awesome time hanging out with them before kickoff. Got highlights of Georgia's decisive win over Tennessee, and then LSU as well looks to upset Alabama and Baton Rouge. Get an upset update on that game and a squib kick here. And 37 seconds remaining in this first half, and just out to the 16 yard line goes Will Shipley. So this is a monster game for Clemson. Their national championship hopes, playoff hopes. We have seen the backup come in for them. What are you thinking right now if you're Dabo Sweeney? Well, I think you let DJ finish this half and you talk about it at halftime. 32 seconds, you're backed up here a little bit. I think you hand the ball off, you go in, you reset, and you try to come win the second half against Notre Dame. And we saw Klubnik on the field throwing some, just getting warmed up before this series. 32 seconds, Clemson has all their timeouts. DJ drops, pressure gets there. Isaiah Foskey drops him from behind, and DJ never saw him. DJ did a good job securing that football right there. They were going to take a shot. Again, Foskey taking the challenge. We're talking about those Clemson defensive linemen. Hey, I can rush the passer too. A big sack before the half. Clemson needs to reset. And Clemson content to take it into the break following the sack by Isaiah Foskey. 14 0. And we got some pushing and shoving going on as they head towards the locker room. Got a little chippy following that sack. And you see the refs and now the Notre Dame coaching staff quickly on the scene to put an end to all of that. And now the crowd. Making some noise once again. See exactly what happened right here. So you see Adam Alola who gets shoved down. That's Walker Parks who pushed him. And of course, that's his brother, Justin Adam Alola. A couple twins for the Irish as they head into the break. So it's 14-0 Notre Dame game getting a little chippy before the second half. All-State halftime report is coming up next. Just how far are we willing to go? Welcome to the All-State halftime report. A 14-0 lead for Notre Dame over Clemson at the half thanks to heroic blocking from Michael Mayer and the touchdown from Drew Pine and this linebacker lounge in South Bend. The legendary sports bar for the Irish fans are loving it. As we welcome you into the All-State Halftime Report, I'm joined by two defensive standouts from these two fine institutions, LeVon Kirkland and Julian Love. Great to have you guys here with me. LeVon, it's your first time here in South Bend. You're watching this Clemson team go into the half with down 14 nothing. but what do you make of this whole atmosphere and what Clemson's trying to achieve here tonight. Well, I really do love the atmosphere, but I don't feel welcome because my Tigers are down at this point in time. But this is my first time here, and it is great. I mean, the crowd is pumping. It's a great place to play football. It certainly is. And, Julian, I had a chance to catch up with Ian Book before the game. I know you chatted with him as well. He quarterbacked this team to a big win over Clemson in 2020. He said, I wish we had this crowd here because it's so different than when we were socially distanced in 2020. What have you noticed about being back here and how the team is playing this week? They're playing fire it up. I think uh, that game that you're referring to, I wish I could have been back playing for the, uh, for the Irish that uh, weekend, but it's electric here, and the Irish are juiced up. They've been doing the little things right this uh, first half, and so hopefully that continues. They've been doing the little things right, that is for sure, including on special teams. Just an incredible way to start this game. Let's take it to the All-State. First half highlights, and it was early in the first quarter. Irish coming out onto an electric atmosphere in the field. Clemson, the number four team, ranked team in the country. And it was a blocked punt by Notre Dame. That is the sixth blocked punt this season. And Prince Colley returns it for a touchdown. Julian, what a way to start the game. That is a wonderful way to start the game. You see interior pressure there. And, yeah, you see the scoop and score. 
special teams is a critical part of the game, and the Irish have taken advantage of this first half. Yeah, you see special teams coach Brian Mason fired up their second quarter. Now Notre Dame almost again blocks another one. Isaiah Foskey's been all over the ball this season. He had a block punt last week, just continues to do his impressive work. Later in the second, Notre Dame looking to go up 10, but it is missed wide left. Of course, it is windy here in this stadium, but Notre Dame made up for it in the second quarter. Less than a minute left in the half is Drew Pine, taking it himself, the five-yard touchdown, thanks to a great block by Michael Mayer. And the Irish have themselves up 14-0. You look at the special teams in this game. Julian, and why is it so important that the special teams performs the way they do? Yeah, it's important because, of, first of all, field position. Uh, the weather here is all over the place, uh, and it really is taking a toll. You see uh, Clemson's punt team a little sporadic early on. They're going to switch it up, get to the more rugby-style punts, just to get the ball out quicker, and hopefully they serve their protection. And Notre Dame's going to continue to come after. And, LaVon, we were watching this game together. You said Clemson's defense was def decent. What do you want to see them clean up? Well, I, I just want to see them penetrate as far as the line of scrimmage is concerned. And then also, you got to make sure that you're containing um, the run when you're playing against anyone. If you don't do that, you don't have a good running game. And then the miscues for Clemson has just not been really sound football at all, and they're really paying for it. You've got to win special teams every game you play. If you don't win special teams, you don't have a chance. We've seen Dabo Sweeney make a change at quarterback in the past. In the previous game that Clemson played against Syracuse, he took DJ Uyunglele out of the game in favor of Club Nick. Do you expect to see a change at quarterback to start the second half? Well, maybe not as quick as he did in the Syracuse game, but I think that a lot of times when you have a pitcher who's in trouble, who's getting home runs, knocked on him, you have to do something different, and you may see this in the second half. All right, we'll wait and see what happens there, but it is an electric atmosphere here in South Bend as the Irish have a 14-0 lead over the number four ranked team in the country. We'll show you what other top ranked teams around college football did today next. On the team. Well, how about this? One week from today on NBC, the University of Notre Dame will face Cal in the City Shamrock Classic. It will be the first women's basketball game ever televised on NBC. Our own Zora Stevenson will be on the call. It is the City Shamrock Classic, 4 p.m. Eastern, Saturday, November 12th, only right here on NBC. Let's get you caught up on the college football landscape from today. Number one, Tennessee traveling to Athens to take on number three, Georgia. First and goal in the first quarter. Georgia down by three when Stetson Bennett rolls out and runs it in himself for a 13-yard touchdown. A lot of times when you think about Stetson Bennett, you want to like, is this guy really a great quarterback here? But he has been playing great, throwing the ball all over the field, scoring touchdowns, and that's why Georgia is number three in the country, and that's why they're off to a hot start. He finds Ladd McConkey there for the 37-yard TD. Now in the second quarter, it's Georgia in the end zone. Bennett to Marcus Rosamie Jack Saint, 21-3 Georgia at this point, Julian. Oof, yeah, we call that a pocket pass where I'm from. Great, great throw. Georgia goes on to win it. Third win against the college football playoff. Number one second under Kirby Smart. How about number two, Ohio State taking on Northwestern. The wind and weather very similar to the way it was here all day, and it was tough for both teams to get their offenses going. Third quarter tie game. Mayan Williams takes it in. 27-yard TD. Ohio State takes their first lead of the game at this point. 14-7. So Northwestern was hanging with them, guys, but late in the game. Mayan Williams again up the gut. His second of the game. Ohio State goes on to win it 21-7. Number 10, LSU hosting number 6, Alabama. Second quarter, Jaden Daniels finds John Emery Jr. Makes a nice cut for that 30-yard touchdown. Currently at 7-6 LSU at the half, guys. An upset brewing there. Uh, well, I tell you what, this was a great dead leg. I mean, great job of getting into the end zone. And sometimes you just have to make a play. And an upset brewing here in South Bend as well. The Irish leading 14-0 at the half over number four, Clemson. Julian, we welcome you back to the stadium. You don't get back here very often, but with the Giants having the bye, can you tell us a little bit about how it's been for you in New York, playing for the Giants, and as a team captain, what that meant to you? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. This is my, my first time ever uh, becoming a team captain at uh, any level, in any sport, and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, the team is gritty. We fight. And right now we're sitting 6-2 into the bye week. Uh, you mentioned the bye week. I... 
Of course, first thing I did was look at who ND plays, and hopefully it's at <laughs> home, and I got a good uh, good game on the schedule. Well, look, yeah, it turned out pretty well for you coming back here with your family. Nice to see you all here, and the, the honor that you received in the in the first quarter as well. And LaVon, for you, I know you're very involved in the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, and some familiar Notre Dame names going to be nominees next year. Can you tell us about what you've been doing for them? Oh, uh, yeah, well, South Carolina has such a rich tradition as far as football is concerned, and the Notre Dame connection, and um, connection that we have is with Mr. Tony Rice, a great quarterback here at Notre Dame, and also Coach Lou Holtz. So we have really touched all areas of South Carolina because of the rich tradition we have in football. But not only that, we try to give back to our student athletes um, in the state of South Carolina, our high school students. We're not ranked very high in South Carolina right now, but we want to change that. And we're going to um, educate, empower, and encourage our student athletes. It's amazing. We Thank applaud you. you for the work you've been doing there with the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame. You mentioned Lou Holtz. Well, guess what? Lou Holtz's son Skip is in the stands tonight, a former coach at Notre Dame. He and the Birmingham Stallions start their title defense when season two of the USFL kicks off on April 20, 2023 on Fox and NBC. Back here at Notre Dame Stadium, it is a 14-0 lead for the underdog Notre Dame Fighting Irish. We're going to check in with Jack Collinsworth and Jason Garrett next. This has been the All-State Halftime Report. Well, it's another blocked punt for the Irish by Jordan Botello, and this time it is Drew Brees, Drew Brees, Drew Pye in his first career rushing touchdown. He sticks it in there for Notre Dame, and so 14 nothing. and this game is so massive for Clemson. How do they get themselves back into this football game? You know, we talked about there's no quarterback controversy at right. Clemson. But I bet there was a lot of discussion at halftime. We're going to see who the quarterback is coming out. DJ has played fine in this game, but Clemson has not. And so maybe Kate Klubnick comes in and gives them a little bit of a spark. We'll see here on this first drive. Yeah, they could use a guy like Drew Brees right now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go to this first half spotlight presented by a Wagoneer. Here's what it looked like. Yeah, to me, the big thing was the drive before the half. Just under six minutes to go. Notre Dame gets it back on the minus 23-yard line. 11 play drive, they run it 10 out of 11 snaps, and then run it right down Clemson's throat. Time and time again, then Drew Pine on a pass, climbs up in the pocket, uses his feet to make a run, and then when you run the ball the way they do, the compliments come alive, the naked bootlegs, the quarterback run. It was a big time drive, over five and a half minutes to put Notre Dame up by two scores. And as it has all season, Notre Dame once again asked the question, what would you fight for? And here today is a group of women nearly 8,000 miles from their school in northern Uganda were together with Notre Dame business professor Wendy Angst and her students. They are working to be the catalyst for change in a region still reeling from tragedy. In the 1980s, a rebel group called the Lord's Resistance Army abducted 30,000 children from the Acholi region of Uganda. I was one of those girls. I was held by the LRA for eight years, and when I escaped, I wanted to rebuild my life, and for me, education was the key to a future. In 2007, St. Bakita's Vocational Training Center opened in Colungo, Uganda to educate young women who had been held captive by the LRA. But by 2019, it was on the verge of closing. Notre Dame's Mendoza College of Business professor Wendy Angst and her students are reimagining the school's curriculum to create financial stability for both the students and the school and to improve the economic prosperity of the region. The most innovative solutions are created in a vacuum. We need to develop deep connections by getting out of the classroom and working with those that have the local insight and cultural understanding. Working with St. Paquitas offers the opportunity to take our classroom across the world and help these students turn their vocational skills into entrepreneurial endeavors. It's an opportunity to learn by doing and an opportunity to make a difference. Our goal at Notre Dame is to teach students the same innovation skills used by Fortune 500 companies to make a meaningful difference in this world. Education saved me. It not only lifted me from my circumstances, but gave me agency and purpose. 
This is what Professor Hanks and her students have given these women. It's a ray of hope that their life can start anew and that their future and the future of Uganda is bright. The University of Notre Dame asks, what would you fight for? Fighting to grow the good in business. We are the Fighting Irish! Notre Dame on top 14 zip, and here's a look at today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. It's the blocked punts. Story of this season for Notre Dame. The special teams group and the plays they have made. It was Prince Kyle who took it into the end zone, then Isaiah Foskey sacked just before halftime. Defensive front of Notre Dame playing tough in the beginning of the game, and Drew Pine escaped for a first down run. Escape for a touchdown run. And Notre Dame on top, time of possession under their control. Total yards 162 on the 84 for Clemson and the rush yards where they're dominating. Offense, defense, kicking game. The great Jimmy Johnson used to talk about it all the time. Notre Dame wants to win a game like this against the number four team in the country. All three phases have to contribute. First 30 minutes, they certainly have. And remember those penalty markers that flew right at the end of the first half. So Notre Dame is going to kick off from the 50. Let's see if they want to try a squib or something here. This is Yokum headed towards the tee. And he will send a grounder towards Will Shipley, able to gather it cleanly. And now Shipley spins ahead across the 20-yard line to the 22. Let's check in Missouri. For the Irish and Marcus Freeman, the focus right now is endless urgency. That's what he told his guys before the game, and he repeated it again at halftime. As far as the scuffle that happened as the guys were headed to the locker room, Marcus Freeman says that kind of stuff does not win you football games. There was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty given to Clemson. I talked to Davo Sweeney, and on offense, he said, we've got to get the ball to Will Ship, and we've got to play more physical. And when I asked him, will we see Cade Klubnick in the second half, he said, anything is possible. Anything is possible for sure, Zor, but it is DJ Uwe Ungle to start for the Tigers. And to the pass game he goes, this is Davis Allen, and Allen lowers his shoulder for a pickup of nine yards. He's been running hard after the catch, a penalty marker comes out. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 20, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Benjamin Morrison who had a good first half, the guilty party. Jack, an interesting contrast to the first play of the ball game. Very similar run pass option type play, holding penalty on Clemson. Now it's a face mask penalty on Notre Dame, giving Clemson a little bit of a lift and good field position. A play action for DJ. He's looking deep down the field, and that's covered great by the Irish. It's Jason Adam and Lola forcing the pressure and Benjamin Morrison stride for stride in coverage. Jack, this is what Clemson does. When they get single high coverage outside, meaning man-to-man, -man, no safety help, they're going to give it a shot. Benjamin Morrison, the freshman, in press, go get him. Hard to do that when Adam and Lola's in your face. Back to the ground, here's Will Shipley. And he was tremendous against Syracuse. And that comeback effort had that 50-yard fourth quarter touchdown run. They lead on the heartbeat here in Shipley. Look for Brandon Streeter, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, to mix those kinds of plays in. We heard Dabo Sweeney talk about we got to be more physical. Those are the physical plays for Clemson. Shipley is their guy. He is their workhorse. Clemson 0 for 5 on third down. DJ has a free rusher in his face. That's Tariq Bracey off the edge. And he forced DJ to move. And the Irish get home for the sack. Al Gold, Notre Dame's defensive coordinator, has been dialing up some pressure. Here on third down, here's Bracey. Coming off the left of the screen. No answer by Clemson. 
Forces DJ out of the pocket. Blue shirts all around him. Lonely feeling for a quarterback. These have been eventful. <laughs> and they're coming after it again. Swanson able to get the punt off. And this will settle a great punt by Swanson in the face of pressure to put it inside the five-yard line. Back it up, Notre Dame and Drew Pine. They have a 14-0 lead over the Clemson Tigers, fourth-ranked Tigers, that is. We'll get there together. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Chipotle, real ingredients, real flavor, Chipotle for real. By Hyundai, it's your journey. By U.S. Bank, we'll get there together. And by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Memorable moments between Clemson and Notre Dame. Of course, Clemson got revenge in that 2020 season with the quarterback back in Trevor Lawrence. A lot of fun history between these two schools, Jack. Making more of it they sure are. as we speak. So the Tigers special teams strike back and they pin Notre Dame deep. Showing pressure. Here's Logan Diggs with space in front. He has blockers out front as well. And he cruises to the 25-yard line. Jaden Thomas at wide receiver threw a great block to Springer. Jack, this is the same play they've been running, this duo play. They're running it right here, but when all the white shirts get in here, Diggs bounces it outside. It's part of the play. Well executed. They run it time and time again. Extra blocker coming from the other side, Jaden Thomas. When you run plays over and over and over again, you handle the contingencies. It showed up there. Pickup of 20. Right back to the ground. Right back to Diggs. He's breaking a tackle. He has another first down. You know what these offensive linemen are saying? Run it again. Hammer these guys. The interior north-south runs. Again, it's Diggs. Mayer going back. It's the same idea. They've run two or three run concepts, but the constant is downhill. Come off the ball. Hit them in the mouth. Bloody their nose. This Notre Dame offensive line has been doing it all game. Tommy Reese was telling us time to time, Blake Fisher looks up at the box he's called plays from, says, run it right behind me, do it again. See if they do. Back to the ground, try the left side this time, and it's Diggs for just a couple. And that's a great feeling if you're calling plays. And, and your offensive lineman or your runner, they're saying, hey, give it to me again. You know, they're buying into what you're doing, and they feel like, you know, nobody has a better view than the player on the field. And they feel like they're wearing them out and punishing them a little bit. As a play caller, absolutely, I'll give you what you want. You better make it work, and Notre Dame's been doing it all night long. So now Chris Tyree checks back in. So rush yards per game allowed, and then what the Irish are doing so far tonight. Notre Dame's been doing that all season long. Empty look, swing it out. This is Chris Tyree with room in front. And Tyree with a stiff arm as he crosses midfield. That was Michael Mayer again getting out front with a great block. And that's what Chris Tyree does. He's an outstanding space player. Get Mayer out there in space to make the block for you. Give Drew Pine a chance to spit it out. Good discipline by Mayer not to hold him. Tyree's outstanding when he's the ball in his hands. Straight drop for Pine, has pressure, now he's flushed. Scrambling, and just throws this football away. That was Braden Lindsay over there in the area. Every time Notre Dame drops back, there's pretty good pressure inside. Clemson just rushing four. Create some one-on-one -on -one matchups inside. Uncomfortable pocket for Pine. No place to throw it. Good job getting out of Dodge. And one more time, there's Trotter. A big hit on Pine at the end of the down. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., son of the great Jeremiah Trotter. That's right. <laughs> We got a flag. Warning. Notre Dame, they're first. 
So Freeman was fired up. And he told us before the game, he noticed watching the TV copy back that Dabo Sweeney stays on top of the referees. And I'm going to stay on top of the referees as well. Gets himself a warning here. Did not like that hit on his quarterback. Sure didn't. And don't think that Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is not trying to send a message to his team, too, that we're a physical team. He's trying to send that message to Drew Pine. Dabo Sweeney's trying to get his guys fired up. They need something. You can see Freeman is still hot. So Pine kind of settled after he released it. And then Trotter smacked it. Surprised they didn't call that one there, Dad. We ought to bring Terry McCauley in to have a conversation about that. Terry McCauley, rules analyst. Longtime NFL referee. Swing this to the outside. And this was blue before that snap. Prior to the snap, the previous play was under review. And they will review it now, so Freeman gets his wish. Terry McCauley, what did you see? So they are going to look at this for targeting. We'll start with the fact that it is, it is actually roughing the passer for sure. Yep. He makes forcible contact to the head and neck area. Now, what you have to do with targeting, you have to find an indicator. Does he, is he leading, lowering and leading with the head to make force of contact? I don't think he is. He's got his head up, leading with the shoulder. So I don't believe this is targeting. I don't believe going, they're going to create that in replay. But it should have been called roughing the passer on the field, which they cannot create in replay. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, there's a lot of talk about, hey, one step, two step. He did this, he did that. Trotter had a chance not to hit him, and he hit him. To me, it's rough in the passer, but I agree with you. I don't think it should be targeting. So, Terry, what specifically are they going to be looking for as they go over here? Is it they obviously can't go back and call the roughing the passer? Does it matter if that helmet is what hit first, even if the intention was the shoulder? Well, he has, you have to have that indicator. Let, we'll go through the whole process. He has to take aim for the purpose of attacking. He does that. But then you have to have an indicator. Does he launch? Does he? Is there an upward thrust? Uh, or does he lead with his helmet? And again, it looks like he's turning his shoulder. no foul for targeting. It's second down. Off the start of the snap. Terry McCauley all over it once again, and that is a big moment because Jeremiah Trotter, you know, Dabo Sweeney said he's a Mike linebacker since birth. You, of course, is his <laughs> great father, and he makes all the calls, all the checks for this Clemson defense, so they need him badly. Played on many teams that tried to block his old man, and he was an outstanding football player, and his son is obviously cut from the same cloth, wearing the same number, make the same kind of plays. Notre Dame quickly to the line of scrimmage. It's Chris Tyree, and Tyree jumps through that first hole. It'll pick up four yards. Now here it is. We find ourselves in another one of those sticky third downs. It's third and six. Looks like Notre Dame's going to be on the ball. Again, another technique they're using to try to quiet this Clemson defensive front down. They look disorganized. Now Pine coming to the backside is Jaden Thomas. And Jaden Thomas had lug out front. It's Barrett Carter who makes the play for Clemson. It's going to bring up a fourth and about three. And Coach Freeman has been very aggressive all season long. See how he wants to play this one. You got to punt this one, Jack. You got to punt it and play field position. You got nine minutes and 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Clemson hasn't scored yet. Make him go the long way. Sot's been good at this. 17 punts inside the 20-yard line. It's a top 20 mark in the FBS. Antonio Williams back deep to receive. And there's another one for Sot. So that settles just beyond the five mark. And at the six-yard line, that's where Clemson will take over. Irish up 14. This left the, the NASCAR championship on NBC and Peacock. So important to reset the table here for Clemson with what's happening around the country. They, of course, ranked fourth in the country as it sits. Number one, Tennessee lost to Georgia. Alabama, close game going with LSU. Just had a field goal to take the lead. Michigan trails Rutgers as well. 
So a lot happening in that playoff picture. What a night. <laughs> no kidding. And they will stick with DJ Uyunglele at quarterback. Will Shipley is the runner beside him. And a flag flies, and that's going to go against the Tigers. Ball start. Offense number 74. After this is the goal. Stay start. Jack, coming out of your end zone, it's the loudest part of the stadium because you have those fans behind you and on either side. So when teams are going in or coming out, it's really difficult to hear. Notre Dame moving around a little bit. Clemson can't function. And this stadium has been rocking since that blocked punt early on. Swing it out to Davis Allen, the tight end, and there is nothing there for Allen. Benjamin Morrison up to meet him. Benjamin Morrison having himself a game. The perimeter defense for Notre Dame has been outstanding. Morrison and Hart shedding blockers and making tackles out in space has been key right from the start of this ball game. Talk about Mayor's clinic reel. That's a clinic reel for a corner making a tackle. Heck of a job by the freshman. Clemson backed up even more from their own five. Irish show pressure. They will bring pressure. It's picked up. DJ Fires has a wide receiver that is complete. It's Bo Collins, and he picks up that first down. It's a big one for Clemson before Jaden Mickey made the stop. Jack, that was Clemson's best play of the ball game, and they're on the ball. On the ball, and they got a couple wide receivers to either side. Twins, they're going to run their quarterback. It's DJ Uyunglele, who has just enough yards for that first down. Nice pickup after the first down. This is own read. DJ pulls it. Foskey goes down. DJ at 235. He's a load as well. Takes four of them to get him down. This time DJ gives the spin move by Shipley, but cannot get away. It's Nana Osaka Mensa who made the stop. There's something that can be back-breaking for a defense when you start all the way back inside your own 10-yard line and you dig it out. These coming-out situations can change the game. The big conversion was the completion to the sidelines and then the quarterback run. Clemson rolling a little bit here today. It's been their best drive. So this is Shipley, and Shipley has nothing tries the middle of that defense and the front for the irish has been great stepping up one more time winning the line of scrimmage up front and forcing clemson into a third and seven situation out gold been dialing up heat bringing pressure the whole game wouldn't be surprised if he does it one more time here his key to the game get clemson in third and long He's done it. DJ, bring pressure just as you said, and that's a wobbly pass that's caught anyway. It's Adam Randall, the true freshman. Guy who tore his ACL in the spring, made his debut in week three, and they wanted to get him the football more. Randall's a big physical guy. They go to him, makes the contested catch, runs it on the ball. Fake it to Maka. DJ wants all of it, chucks this football down the field, and that is incomplete. It's Randall once again, but Benjamin Morrison, step for step. This is what Clemson does. They create single high situations. They're by themselves. Morrison has no safety help. A little bit of a tug there. Keeps Randall under control, but Clemson loves to take these shots outside, and the Notre Dame corners have been up to the task.
DJ holds the football. Now he's going to try to scramble forward, and he's able to make a positive play out of it before a third down. There's more pushing and shoving in the secondary. Joseph Angata involved before a third down. DJ does a good job scrambling forward. You go from second and ten to third and seven. That's a big difference. Much more manageable third down situation. They get on the ball. They're getting a call from the sidelines. Communication is not easy. The Notre Dame faithful are on their feet. Clemson one for seven on third down. It's that four-man rush by Notre Dame. DJ fires and put it on his wide receiver and Adam Randall. It's Benjamin Morrison there. And Freeman said it. More teams are targeting the true freshman. The true freshman rises to the occasion. And there's no doubt that Clemson likes this matchup. Randall, 230 pounds. Morrison, 180. They've gone to him a couple times. Morrison has a little savvy, a little jersey tug here and there. Never hurt anybody. Two big pass breakups here in this drive. He's been up to the challenge all night long. Swanson gets this punt away. It's another low liner. It's Brandon Joseph. Picks that football up, and Joseph gets it out near the 25-yard line. It has been a tale of two sides in this game. The run game for Notre Dame taking over, but the Irish defense has been clutch so far. streaming on Peacock. And the NASCAR championship at Phoenix. One final showdown out west. Four drivers enter. One leaves a NASCAR champion. Tomorrow, three Eastern on NBC and Peacock. And last week at Martinsville, Ross Chastain, the unprecedented move. It's a video game movie. Pull off. <laughs> get into the championship for Just hammer down into the wall and ride that thing across the line. Unreal. Sounds like that's something Jack Collinsworth does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I had to turn that car over. And this running back trio for the Irish. 24 carries, 146 yards, 6.1 yards per attempt. and it's Logan Diggs who's lowering his shoulder. Nice pickup on first down. And we saw this image for the commercial break. Dabo Sweeney walked towards his quarterbacks. First he engages the backup, of course, in Cade Klubnik. And then he lets DJ know it looks like we have a change coming at quarterback for the Tigers. Like that move? Yeah, I just feel like it's something that he has to do to try to give this Clemson football team a little bit of a spark. And the fullback into the game in Sherwood. Now Pine back to Diggs. And he is met and dropped. It'll be a third and short. Using that big personnel, those three tight ends in the ball game. And continue to try to hammer them. Notre Dame again using Temple in his third and short situation. Getting on the ball. Heavy formation. They will flip it out to the outside. This is Logan Diggs. Nice spin move by Diggs. He is still on his feet, carrying a defender. Jared Patterson helping him down the field. Broke the tackle of Barrett Carter. Yeah, Tommy Reese has done an excellent job using his in-game tendencies to his advantage. Three tight ends in the ball game. It's been this all night long. He pitches it wide. Pulls the tackle, Joe Alt. All blocks the perimeter defender. Logan Diggs showing his athleticism, his balance, spin move. Still secures the football and finishes north and south. Big pick up for the Irish. Keep the fullback in the game. Pine on the roll. Looking downfield. And that pass is caught. It's Jaden Thomas who's diving down the sideline with the reception inside Clemson territory. What a throw by Drew Pine. He comes out on the naked bootleg. Jane Thomas crosses the corner's face. Pine 
caught under duress, puts the ball on the boundary, getting hit as he throws. I love how he keeps his eyes on the throw. Jaden Thomas goes and gets it. He keeps that foot in bounds. Back to the ground. Here's Logan Diggs. Shakes a tackler. Nice gain once again by Logan Diggs. Starting to get himself going. Broke the tackle of Jeremiah Trotter on that run. Jack, it's an interesting play. It looks like it's a downhill run. They pull the backside guard and then they bounce the play outside. So again, the compliments that Notre Dame has used. Good look at Harry. He stand the offensive line coach. Certainly one of the best in the country. A lot of years here at Notre Dame. He's been in the NFL. He develops these guys. He develops them individually. He develops the unit. Take great pride in being a Notre Dame offensive lineman. My favorite is the guy on top, Zach Martin. They've had a lot of great ones through the years. Second and five, going back to the wide receiver and Jaden Thomas, but that was Barrett Carter. And Barrett Carter in there quickly met Thomas and dropped him, and it's going to bring up a third and long for Notre Dame. It sure is, and you got to think about field position here as well. 38 yard line. You get the first down at the 30. Positive play is critical here. Might be tough to kick the field goal here. I don't think it's four down territory for Notre Dame. Irish four for nine on third down. Clemson showing pressure. Just rush four. High notices it, fires down field. He's looking for Michael Mayer. It's off the hands of Mayer. It's Makuba back there in coverage and gets the job done. Fourth and seven. Jack, you said it, the pressure inside forces Drew Pine off the spot. Michael Mayer, good release inside. He wins. He wins early, but Pine has to move in the pocket. He's late with the ball, and the ball's outside. Whenever the receiver has the hand up and the quarterback still has the ball in his hand, you're late. He tries to get it out of there. Couldn't get it done. Notre Dame going to try to put him down and continue to play field position like they have all night long. This would be into that wind. And as Sot does so often, a nice punt that stops inside the 10 yard line. More beautiful work from the special teams. Iris Lee by 14. Every two because if it brings fans to their feet, it's streaming live on Peacock. And aerial coverage is brought to you by Geico. Terrific crowd inside Notre Dame Stadium for a primetime matchup against Clemson. And here comes Cade Klubnik, the true freshman out of Austin, Texas. Didn't exactly light up the stat sheet when he came in against Syracuse, but he didn't screw it up either. And the biggest thing that Dabo Sweeney said was he didn't turn the ball over. We were running the ball well enough to win. Haven't exactly ran the ball the same way tonight. See how they use it. Round to start. It's Shipley. And Notre Dame defensively is on the spot. Adam Alola in the mix. Jack, they were down 11 to Syracuse when Klubnik came into the ball game. Down 14 with just over a quarter to play. Biggest thing he has to do is get himself settled into the ball game. In that coming out situation, crowd noise. Looks like he's doing an excellent job communicating with his offensive line. Handled the mechanics of the game at the start. Klubnik rolling has pressure in his face, has to just throw this ball, and it's intercepted! Picked up by Benjamin Morrison, having the game of his life! Klubnik did a great job last week not turning the ball over, second play in. They go naked bootleg to the left. He's got some pressure. Throws the ball across his body, back inside. Justin Alamalola in his face, he tries to flip it. And you said it, Benjamin Morrison has been everywhere tonight. A physical tackle on the corner, he's made plays down the field. The biggest play of the game, though, is taking the ball away. The Irish knocking on the door one more time, inside the 15-yard line. Hodrick Estime, the running back. And he gets the football straight up the middle. 
And Estime is going to pick up four. And you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, they had to get those game-changing plays. Punt block for a touchdown. Interception sets up the Irish offense nicely. And then run the ball. It's the recipe for winning this ball game tonight, and Notre Dame has done it. They did it right from the start of this ball game. They've been the more physical team in this game. They've been the more opportunistic team in this game. They're up 14 with a quarter to play. Let the clock wind out on this third quarter. Head to the other side of the field. You see the fours in the air, and Clemson needs to play their best football in that fourth quarter. They find themselves down 14 points, the number four team in the country, all over the ropes in South Bend, Indiana. this in the break tail of two sidelines the irish they turned the lights completely out inside notre dame stadium and marcus freeman he wanted to put his touch on the way that they do things for home games you see it irish now knocking on the door set up by the interception by the true freshman morrison couple running backs in the game tyree and estimate Hine keeps it on the roll. He's got Mayer out there throwing a nice block. And once again, Drew Pine is going to use his legs. It's good hard running. And this time, it appears he will get the flag. And a flag comes out. That was Tyler Venables over there making the tackle. After the play, personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number 24. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Jack Drupine not known for being a great runner from the quarterback position. Three huge runs in this ball game. The run for the first down on the last drive before the half. The touchdown on that play right there. They're inside the two-yard line. Quickly on the football. Audric Estime in for the Notre Dame touchdown. It has been physical domination up front by this Notre Dame offensive line and these Notre Dame runners all night long just pounding away. You get down in their clothes, why not give it to Estime? Finishing the drive, making it a three-score game. For Estime, his ninth rushing touchdown. And now Blake Rufy is good with the extra point. Notre Dame 21, Clemson 0. You got to win as a team. The block punt early, and now the interception. Here's Klubnik sprinting out to his left. Adam Alola in his face. It's a poor decision by Klubnik. Trying to do too much in this part of the ball game, and he pays for it. The other freshman, Benjamin Morrison, makes him pay, and then give it to number 7. Downhill one more time. The worst matchup in football is a 230-pound back on a corner. Notre Dame got it. Estime finished it. So do you let the true freshman come back in now in Klubnik or back to Young Lale after the interception when you just made the change to go with Kate Klubnik? Absolutely. You keep Klubnik in there. You let him work his way out of it. You try to get him into the game, get him comfortable. Yoakum send it deep, and then fair catch called for by Shipley. That's one of the biggest challenges for a backup quarterback is everybody else has been playing for three quarters. Now you come into the ball game, you have a different energy level than everybody else. You have to handle the mechanics of the game. You have to be able to take the snap, take care of the ball, be smart with the football, just get into the flow of the game. They've been sweating for hours. Your jersey doesn't have anything on it yet. So important for him right now. And so they will go back with DJ Uyunglele at this point in the game. Interesting decision by Dabo. 
Down 21. DJ to the outside. He's looking for Bo Collins, and he can't hang on. Do you like this decision here? You know, there's a lot of psychology that goes into all this stuff. And holding defense number five. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Dabo knows his guys better than I know his guys. So the mentality, what decision allows the team to respond the best? DJ has been their guy who's been their starter for 14 straight wins. So he goes back to that. DJ has to be a mentally tough guy to be able to handle the switch. Irish, show pressure, bring that pressure. And he is brought down by JT Bertrand, who rushed right up the middle. And found DJ. Bertrand is just one of those guys who sees the game and feels the game. Such good instincts. He's always around the ball. Gets off of blocks, works his way back inside and makes the play on DJ. Now fires. That's a dangerous pass. Joseph and Donna, the intended target. DJ Brown over there. Penalty marker flies. Pass interference. Defense number two. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's an ill advised throw by DJ. Trying to throw the ball, what they call the turkey hole up the sidelines. And a two deep coverage. The safety is wide. DJ sitting out there waiting for him. Big thing for Notre Dame here is to take a breath. There's a lot of emotion in the stadium right now. You got to go back and execute ball plays on the defensive side. Said Shipley in motion. Now Uyungle fires downfield, wants all of it, and another flag. So this has been a physical game on the outside. No calls really to this point. And now you're starting to see the secondary draw some penalties. This is one of those bubble screen plays. You pump it and you try to throw the go route up the sidelines. And third contact. play on this drive. On both sides, see who they'll get. Pass interference, defense number five, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Okay, Terry, how did you see those last two calls? Yeah, Jack, neither one of those were fouls. The first one, the defender's clearly playing the ball, No, does not significantly hinder the, the receiver. This one, again, just slight contact between both players. Again, not a foul for defensive pass interference. Now DJ, and that is tipped up and still caught. It's Shipley who's able to keep himself in bounds impressively. And these are the two calls that are marching Clemson down the field. Yeah, you see him. He's got his head turned playing the ball. This is equal rights. This is not a foul on anybody. Again, the head's turned, some slight contact, really more of a, a slight push off, not enough for offensive pass interference, not a foul for defensive pass interference. As it stands, here comes Clemson, and this is complete, Antonio Williams, the true freshman, he's working on Xavier Watts for another first down. DJ looks settled and comfortable, obviously benefiting from those pass interference calls, but looks comfortable and gaining a little momentum. This is certainly Clemson's best drive, albeit aided by the officials. Now DJ, you right down the middle. He's looking for his tight end, Davis Allen. Ramon Henderson there with a big shot, and there will be no flag. Trying to get Allen up the seam on the right-hand side. DJ a little late with the ball. Really good job by Ramon Henderson. Hitting him in the middle of the body with the shoulder to dislodge him. And Bo Collins has entered the tent on the Clemson sideline. E.J. Williams into the game, and they're going to review for targeting once again. Terry busy on this drive. Terry McCauley, our rules expert. What would you see? I see the same thing Coach Garrett saw. This is the force of this contact is shoulder to chest. There is some contact to the head. It's incidental. This is not a foul for targeting. 
it's really textbook how you want to play this play and you know, really really a credit to everybody involved in football over the last 10 15 years about teaching this the right way and uh, Ramon Henderson using his shoulder obviously After further review there is no foul for targeting it's second down you could tell that's been coached as to how to handle that situation the blow up shots down the scene they've gone away from football in a good way and uh, good job not calling targeting there Clemson just has to continue to stay in this ball game don't look at the scoreboard just get one score have to cash in on this drive Clemson has found ways to win all season long need to find some ways now down 21 fourth quarter DJ is picked off, intercepted again by Benjamin Morrison. Here goes Morrison down the sideline. Can he go? Yes, he can. Touchdown, pick six, Benjamin Morrison. Wow. The freshman has been everywhere tonight. Second interception. And he takes it all the way back. Benjamin Morrison is mat mature beyond his years. It's press coverage. He turns and finds the ball and he plucks it. And he knows what to do with it afterwards. A convoy of Notre Dame blockers ahead of him. Two difference making game changing plays made by the freshman. Notre Dame playing by far their best game all season long. Benjamin Morrison. And it is time now for Players on the Rise brought to you by Hyundai. Benjamin Morrison is a true freshman. He's done it all tonight. He's been outstanding, sticky in coverage. He's shown up as a tackler on the perimeter. Time and time again, snuffing out the bubble screens, sticking his shoulder in. When he's had a chance to make a play on a ball, he's done it twice. Intercepting it, giving the Irish great field position in the red zone, and then why not take it all the way back? He's 18 years old. His dad was a pro football player. You see that in his DNA. Mature beyond his years. And this guy is a playmaker. He's been the difference. He's made the game-changing plays for the Irish all night long. Yokelin for a touchback. And remember, Falcon Morrison, he's recruited by Mike Mickens, longtime friend of Coach Freeman, his position coach now. And he said he sees the same star in him. This is, this is the guy that recruited Sauce Gardner to the University of Cincinnati. And ever since he got to camp, he said, this is the next star. He is going to be terrific. And Coach Freeman slowly but surely is believing all those words. Yeah, and everybody who's talked about Benjamin Morrison since we first started covering Notre Dame is mature beyond his years. He's a freshman. He acts like a vet. He knows how to handle it. He knows how to approach it. The moment's not too big, and we're seeing all that tonight. Uwe Unga Lule back into the game. It's Mafa with the grab. And Mafa escorted out of bounds by Clarence Lewis. And again, if you're Clemson in this situation, the only thing matters is what we do now. <laughs> You've gotten yourself into a tremendous hole here. It's going to be challenging to get back into this ball game, to say the least. But one play at a time, try to get one score at a time. Pressure coming. Goal so it's it's <laughs> DJ Brown. DJ Brown back on his feet, and he got a hit on DJ. Timed that up perfectly to DJ Brown. And now Golden is bringing pressure. And here's DJ coming from way back in the secondary. He hits it on time. Excellent block by Mafa. Good coverage on the back end. Staying aggressive, staying after him. This Irish defense has been fantastic all night long. And Clemson has really struggled on third down. DJ fires, and that pass is caught. It's Adam Randall, and Randall shakes loose. 
and has more than that first down. For Notre Dame on defense, it's a fine line between coming after him and staying aggressive and understanding where you are in the ball game. 12 minutes to go, up 28 nothing. So balancing, keeping them in front of you, and rallying and tackling, but staying aggressive. The end of the line under pressure and just throws this football away. It's Justin Adamalola in his face. The energy of this Irish defensive line has been fantastic all night long, making the environment for DJ really uncomfortable. And it's been different guys showing up. Justin Adamalola has been everywhere and around the quarterback throughout this ball game. On a draw, it's Martha. Plenty of space, and he'll pick up the first down. It's an excellent call when they're in a pass rush mode. They're getting up the field. That's when those draws come alive. You got to keep mixing them in as you go forward here. DJ to the outside, and that pass is dropped. It's Will Taylor who was there, hit put on by D.J. Brown, and Taylor let the ball come out of his arms. The energy for this Irish defense has been infectious. We talk about the physicality of Notre Dame's offensive line. How about the defense? Knocking them back time and time again. We've seen them dislodging the ball from these Clemson receivers. D.J., the graduate senior, making a play. Young away down the middle. It's Davis Allen. Allen working that seam nicely. Takes it inside the 25. Good look at DJ just standing in here, throwing that seam route to Allen on time. Good hands catch by Allen in traffic. Pickup of 22 and quickly to the line. DJ to the outside. This time it's Antonio Williams. He'll pick up seven. For Notre Dame, it's just rally and tackle. Rally and tackle. Don't give them any big plays. As you go forward, make it hard for them to score down and close. He just hit. And down goes Uri under the way. It's Tariq Bracey on the blitz with the sack from his nickel spot. Racy does it all. He's an outstanding cover guy and also an outstanding blitzer coming right down the pipe. Times it well. He goes unblocked. Good job by DJ hanging on to that football. Those things come out pretty easily when you get hit up by a guy that you can't see. One more third and low here. DJ is going to step forward. Now take off and run. Has room. Goes vertical. And he reaches that football out. They're going to mark it right there at the one yard line. This guy's all 235 pounds running north and south, hurdling people, trying to get in the end zone for Clemson. And they go fast. Notre Dame trying to sub. They cannot. Touchdown, Clemson. It's Will Shipley. Chance to make it 28-7 with this extra point. And it's an excellent response here by Clemson. They go fast on the touchdown. Notre Dame's not ready. Get the ball snapped and they went up front. Make it 28-7 here. Trying to keep their hopes alive with 10 and 14 to go. So here's BT Potter. On for the extra point. And right down the middle goes Pop. So the pick six, and then Uri Ungalale comes right back down the field. A quick strike for Clemson. They get themselves a touchdown going airborne.
Ever wonder why they call Versus Lopez, Friday on NBC. And aerial coverage is brought to you by Geico. The college football playoff rankings. Clemson has to find a way to pull off this comeback. They are going to need a lot. See what's happened so far. Tennessee lost to number three Georgia. Michigan now leads Rutgers. And so there has been crazy movement at the top of these playoff rankings. You got Alabama as well. They're in a very close game with LSU. Fair catch called for by Chris Tyree. Good look at Marcus Freeman right there. You know, we talked to Coach Freeman this week and, you know, talked about, hey, here's the number four team in the country coming in here and you guys are underdogs. And he almost kind of cut us off and said, hey, hey, you know, this isn't David and Goliath. You know, Notre, Notre Dame ain't David. Notre Dame's Notre Dame. And, and we feel confident about the kind of team we are right now. We feel confident about playing the kind of game we need to to beat this Clemson team. The players echoed that message. You talked to Mayer, you talked to Foskey. They expected to dominate, and they have. Good here, Logan Diggs, who has plenty of room. Now, Logan Diggs is going to lower his shoulder on Makuba and pick up more than that first down out to the 40. We've seen this all night long. It's north and south runs right at the heart of the defense. Double teams at the point of attack. Back finds the hole. Logan Diggs, he's that versatile back that Notre Dame has. He's a good space player. He's also a good physical back, knocking Clemson defenders backwards at the end of the down. It's been the story of the night for the Irish. How Notre Dame over 200 yards rushing five out of the last six games, 212 yards on the ground, establishing that identity. Here goes Diggs. Once again, offensive line is opening things up nicely. Jack, it's the same play. They dress it up. They get in different formations. They use different personnel groups. It's the same play. Double teams at the point of attack. Knock them back that way. They've done it all night long. And when you run the same plays over and over and over again, you handle all the different looks. You say, handle the contingencies. If they do something different, we can respond to it. And that's been evidence since we kicked this thing off tonight. Controlling the line of scrimmage. Whatever Clemson does, we have an answer. Physical smash mouth football, been awfully effective. Now Logan Diggs takes himself over 100 yards rushing. Bring in Estime. He's trying to gain that edge. It does. Nice stiff arm put on him. Jalen Phillips and turns it upfield inside Clemson territory. Jack, 37 times in the last two weeks they ran this play. They call it duo. Double teams at the point of attack. They ran it to the right last time. Now they run it to the left. Tommy Reese, it's his favorite running play. Harry Heaston, it's his favorite running play. When you have an offensive line like Notre Dame does, and you have blocking tight ends like they have, it's an outstanding play. The defense can't be right. Notre Dame showing that again and again tonight. Hine gives once again Estime in the front of Irish. Continue to move that defensive line of Clemson backwards, and Estime just moves the pile. Hey, Jack, we have to reset this because as we talked in our preparation all week long, the challenge was going to be this Clemson defensive line, this front seven. There's NFL players all over, and they've been dominated tonight. This Notre Dame offensive line has come off the ball and hit him in the mouth time and time again. And you don't see a white flag out there, but they're almost raising the white flag. They're tired of this. Starting to melt that clock away. Back to the ground. This time it's Chris Tyree. And he is met quickly. That time Miles Murphy made the stop. And you think about what this win would mean for Marcus Freeman. It would reignite all the hype of the Freeman era. Clemson, their first. 
as Clemson takes a timeout. Marcus Freeman trying to put away the biggest win of his career as Irish head coach. Let's step aside. Don't miss an all-new Saturday Night Live, hosted by comedian Amy Schumer with musical guest Steve Lacey. New SNL Live Coast to Coast on NBC and Peacock. See the gang getting ready in New York City. Looks like they're doing a New York Jets skit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jets back in the news, huh? Been a few years on that one. To the ground, ground and pound. Audrey Gestime picks up another first down. Hey, Jack, they've been playing college football since 1869. I'd like to see the winning percentage. If you rush the football for nearly 250 yards, like Notre Dame has tonight, you block a punt for a touchdown, and you intercept the pass for a touchdown. I'd like to see the winning percentage on that. <laughs> Pretty good chance you win a lot of those games. I'll say. <laughs> When you look at the numbers for Pine, it's not like he has been dominant in the passing game whatsoever, but he has been huge with his legs at moments. Here goes Estime, and he stopped initially, and they're going to blow the whistle. Keith McGuire, who made the stop. Let's check in with Zora. Audrick Estime's mom introduced him to football when he was a kid, and after Estime was seen tackling kids during basketball games, his mom knew it was time to sign him up for a new sport. Now the running back you see out there on the field plays football as a way to honor his mother, who died from sickle cell disease when Estime was just 10 years old. His one and only tattoo is of her birthday, Jack. Zora, thank you so much. And we had so much fun catching up with Estime a few weeks ago and his story making his way to the University of Notre Dame. He wanted to play here, wanted to play behind this Irish offensive line, and he has been terrific this season, and bouncing back from tough moments, had some fumbles, and then responded with huge games, and how about another? He is such a great young man, and, and, and you said it. He thrives in this environment of Notre Dame, this physical run attack that they have. And, uh, and he's the guy, he's the bell cow. He's the identity guy for Notre Dame. Hand it to seven, we're gonna knock you off the line of scrimmage and run north and south. Done a great job all year long and, and all outstanding tonight. Give goes to Chris Tyree and nothing there. As you see a little fatigue out of Clemson, they've played a lot of plays, a lot of wear. Out of the defensive front, Notre Dame just continues to churn in one fresh running back after another. It's Tyree, it's Estime, it's Logan Diggs, all getting themselves going. They sure do. When you keep those backs coming and they're fresh, these fresh legs coming at you, it can be challenging psychologically as much as anything else. But coming into this game, Notre Dame had to find a way to take the edge off of the defensive line of Clemson. They got some outstanding players up there, and they've certainly done that with this physical run game. Third and 13, and why not run it again? Here comes Estime. Jumps up into the air, lands, and gains that first down. Depends where they mark him, and they're going to move those chains. They can't stop Estime. 253 yards rushing, and it started right from the beginning. And it's all three backs. It's Diggs. It's Tyree. And it's Estime, the three-headed monster. The big guy's knocking him off the ball up front. Hand it to those guys, and they do the rest. When you get it close, <laughs> give it to the big guy. He's going to get in the end zone for you. It's been the story for the Notre Dame offense, and Clemson's had enough. One more time with Estime, who's still fighting for extra yardage, and they've been going behind Joe Alt, the sophomore, 19 years old. He's the highest-graded left tackle in the entire country. He's the son of Pro Bowl left tackle John Alt. So he has been trained since birth to play that position. And my goodness, does he play that position well. He sure does. And you said it. He's 19 years old. When he walks into the room, he's 6'8", 315 pounds. He's got a little bit of a baby face. But uh, I'll tell you what, he is a physical young man. 
going to be an elite protector, pass protector in this league, but he's showing he can be a tough physical run blocker as well. Here's Pye to the air. Wide open is Michael Mayer for the touchdown. I would say that's the dagger, Jack. Eleven plays, 73 yards before the half. Eleven plays, 75 yards here. When you're running the football, as well as Notre Dame has, the play-action pass comes alive. Why not throw it to that guy? Drew Pine, clean pocket. A perfect strike between the eight and the seven. And one more record that Michael Mayer now earns all by himself. Touchdowns by a tight end. Mayer 16, McAfee 15. His season has been off the charts. Breaks loose after the run game took over and into the end zone goes Mayer. The smile from Freeman says it all. There goes McGregor. <laughs> There is a party beginning inside this building, and it starts with honoring Michael Mayer. This was during the break. See the teammates, the whole crowd as they put up on the Jumbotron. It drew Pine. The McGregor walk to the sideline, and he's juiced. Teammates love him. Grew up a Notre Dame fan, lifelong Irish fan. And look who's down on the sideline. It's Tommy Reese who calls plays from the box, making his way down the field. He had to get a hug to his quarterback. Reese just wanted to be a part of this thing. What a great job Tommy did tonight. But story of this offensive line, these tight ends, and that guy right there, Drew Pine, for Notre Dame's offense. And Pine did what he had to do tonight in this ball game. Don't want to underestimate the plays he made with his feet. Made a couple timely throws in this game, and he led this Notre Dame offense. They made those game-changing plays in the kicking game. The block punt set the tone, the interception for a touchdown. Then this Irish offense did their part as this game went on. And you saw Tyler Buckner as well, who came down with Tommy Reese to get Drew Pine. A hug. And now this is complete to Joseph and Ghana. The remaining schedule for Clemson is probably their toughest test that remain. They will move to one loss as there's just four minutes to play. I don't want to totally put this game to rest just yet. Dipping under four minutes, it's 35 to 7. And so if they move to one loss, do you see a road in? There's still obviously season remaining here. It seems like always one loss team gets in. This is late in the year, though, to have it. Yeah, their mindset simply has to be take care of our own business. They're not going to win this game tonight, but let's win next week, the following week, the week after that. Let's take care of what we need to do. If we're a one loss team, why can't we be the best one loss team in the country? It'll be out of their hands, though. They were controlling their destiny no more. That's in Gata once again. For Marcus Freeman, he starts 0 for 3, dating back to the bowl game. Big upsets, Marshall, Stanford, both of those games at home that they lost as DJ is complete here to Shipley. But with the win over Clemson, he'll be 6 and 1 since that start. Three of those wins being over ranked opponents and Clemson the longest active win streak at 14 games would be snapped and here's Shipley who is drug out of bounds by Morris Marcus Freeman and his staff has righted the ship after the 0-2 start particularly the loss to Marshall they came back you said it 6-1 and one. The loss to Stanford comes back and kills them, but they played good football. They've been a different team. They've gotten better as the season wore on. You can't overcome those losses and get back in the mix. But this program is going in the right direction. No doubt about that. We under the lay on the scramble and picks up that first down. To Dabo Sweeney, what kind of a message do you deliver to the team after a game like this? There is no one in the country better at delivering messages than that guy right there, Dabo Sweeney. His record speaks for itself. 
He's a tremendous motivator. He will get the mindset of this team right going forward. And there will be a tough out down the stretch. He always looks for the positive in all these situations. And remember the upset back in 2020 told us a story that his favorite memory, his lasting memory of a bad day was that he got an email from a lady who had worked at Notre Dame for 40 years and said it's the cleanest the locker room has been left as this pass is caught over the middle and rumbling forward for another nice first down. He said it's the cleanest that the locker room has ever been left in 40 years. So he goes right back in front of his team and he says, this is winning. This is what winning looks like. We still got season left as a player is down for the Irish. And we'll take a break and check on the injury. DJ Brown, who was shaken up for Notre Dame, able to walk to the sideline under his own power. The defensive coordinator, Al Gold, he said he always sleeps the best before big games because he knows the guys are going to come out ready to fight. And he'd be surprised if they didn't come out tonight and fully attack. They have done just that. How about the performance by this Irish defense? Al and the defensive staff did a great job preparing these guys, and his defense has responded throughout this game. And the Ungalale is going to float this football out of bounds. You get what you emphasize as a coach, Jack. And there's no doubt in my mind, Al Golden emphasized the importance of being a great perimeter defense in this game. How these corners have tackled right from the start has been critical. And obviously this defensive line was challenged as well. Step up. And they certainly did that. They've controlled and dominated this game throughout. Now, DJ takes a hit and floats this football into the air. Penalty marker comes out of the secondary. as Isaiah Foskey with another pressure. And an Irish player slow back to his feet. Pass interference. Defense number two. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It was DJ Brown who checks back into the game and gets the call. And it's Justin out of Milola who's down. Look at the DPI there. DJ has that contact. The ball is in the air. Justin out Milola has been fantastic. Very disruptive all night long for the Irish. Certainly hope he's okay. He's one of two twins, of course, on this Irish defense. And they're so active. See his brother there, Jason, as well. So close. Do everything together. And we'll see if Justin can make his way back to his feet. One thing that's abundantly clear is Notre Dame coaching staff is keeping the pedal down. Notre Dame's last touchdown was the pass to Mayer. Al Golden's been blitzing throughout this drive, continuing to bring heat. He's just not going to sit there and let Clemson drive the ball down the field. And his team has responded. They thrive in this kind of a situation. So now an opportunity inside the five. at least get some points and that is caught for a touchdown it's joseph and gata who will at least get clemson 13 points on the board pending the extra point just man-to-man -man coverage there and dj sees and gata gives him a little back shoulder throw over cam hart a strong hands catch by and to finish the play So 35 13 with 135 remaining. Notre Dame has played their best games when the opponents are tough. They've played their best games on the road. Been trying to bring this type of performance back home 
And Marcus Freeman knows about it. He's aware of that. He talks about it openly. I understand that everybody's talking about the fact that we haven't played our best inside Notre Dame Stadium when they did tonight. Jack, as a coach, you're always thinking about how you can bring the best out in your team, in individual players, in units, and your whole football team. And you said they played up to their competition. When they played the best teams on their schedule, that's when they played their best football. In some of the lesser teams, they have not played quite as well. So, you know, Marcus will look at that as a staff. What have we done leading up to those games? What were some of the indicators that, that might have led to those poor performances? But at the same time, you have to look at the indicators that lead to the great performances as well. And for me, it's the mindset and the mentality of this group. He said it. We're not David and David and Goliath. We're Notre Dame. The coaches and the players followed his lead. They walk with confidence coming into this ball game. They expected to dominate, and they have. And it's been a team effort. Offense, defense, kicking game all showed up all throughout this ball game. They physically dominated Clemson. They've been the better team since the opening kickoff. Here comes an onside kick from Clemson, and it's a massive recruiting weekend as well for Notre Dame. 28 commits that they have on campus. It's their best recruiting class, highest ranked recruiting class in a long time. And here comes the onside kick. And who else? Michael Mayer on the spot for the recovery. So this is the Irish schedule. Final three games. Had the Navy, Boston College back here at home, November 19th, and then USC. It's a tough one with SC on the road, November 26th. So if you're Marcus Freeman, it's that now it's reset. Okay, we win this game. Huge win. Enjoy it tonight. Have some fun with it. Okay, but now we're back at Navy, Boston College, two games we should win. How do we get the mindset and the mentality right again to play our best football? And his favorite point to make, as you see Estime once again, is that we want to be just as critical of the wins as we are with the losses. And he has said that all season long. After great games, he's just as critical. After losses, he's the exact same guy. Didn't change his personality, his approach with the team one bit. And finally, the results started to come. It's a great line. Don't let the result mask the evaluation. So evaluate the game, independent of what the scoreboard says, what you did on each play. And coaches have to be critical. You have to look at it with a critical eye, because oftentimes when you play like a game like this, you think everything is great. It's not. There's plenty of stuff to clean up for Notre Dame as they go forward. And after some of those losses, you think everything is bad. Look at it with a critical eye. Be objective evaluators. Learn from and move forward. That's the challenge for Notre Dame going to Navy next week. Goes both ways for Clemson, too. Dabo Sweeney going to have to be critical after this one as they head into the home stretch of their season with their first loss. And here is Tyree, and the Irish have a couple of running backs over 100 yards and digs and Estime, and that's been the story along with this Notre Dame defense. What a night for Marcus Freeman and the Notre Dame fighting Irish. And on the flip side for Clemson, they're in the mix. They're the number four team in the country. They're in the college football playoff. They come to South Bend and lose to an unranked Notre Dame team, 35 to 14. Tough plane ride home. You got to reset, regroup, and get ready for the next challenge. And remember, after that 2020 upset, Notre Dame faith will storm the field. They're going to have a heck of a job trying to keep them off the field again. <laughs> and here they go. And here they go. <laughs> what a scene. And Zora is standing by with Coach Freeman. Coach, Coach trying to secure the field here. Coach, all week you answered questions about an upset. And you said this isn't David versus Goliath. It's a great fight. How'd you guys get it done? We 
found a way to win. I tell you that. Um, I couldn't be more proud of this group. You know, this road to where we want to go isn't as always how you see it. Um, you continue to fight, believe in each other, continue to work your tails off. Uh, good things come about, and uh, that was today. That was a representation of today. You talked about some of the ups and downs of this season. What's the effect of a win like this? Well, I think it builds confidence. It builds confidence and belief in what we're doing. Um, and, you know, this feeling of victory is something that's it's so addicting. And uh, that's what you get out of it. And I'm so excited. I'm ready to go celebrate with these guys. Well, and you're not the only one feeling it. This entire stadium is feeling it, too. Let's go! Let's go! This is what it's all about. We're going to enjoy this one. Congrats, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. That is a night that Marcus Freeman will remember forever. Forget about the security. He wants to be a part of it. Absolutely. There's no feeling like that. Not to be a Notre Dame student, being a part of this thing, storming the field. He'll have this memory forever. And right in the middle of that are all those gold helmets and their head football coach, Marcus Freeman. And uh, well-deserved, well-deserved. They've had some trials and tribulations early on in this year. They stuck together. They kept fighting. They kept battling. And to win a game like this against the number four ranked team in the country, wow, big time. And Benjamin Morrison, he deserves some love from his classmates. Performance he put on, he was targeted all game. He's been the most targeted of the entire secondary of Notre Dame here recently. And he loves it. He loves that opportunity. And for Clemson, the win streak was the longest in the country. 14 games, and it is snapped inside Notre Dame Stadium. Great expression in football and life. The only thing that matters is what we do now. This one ain't coming back for the Clemson Tigers. Learn from it and move on. And you said it. They've responded to adversity as well in the past. There's a reason this program has been as successful as it has over the last 15 years. DJ is going to rally his troops. They have challenges ahead. Look at that scene. Nights like this, why you love college football. And you were asking Foskey, you were asking the leaders of this team, what's the mindset when you go into these big games, tough opponents, highly ranked opponents? He said, I fully expect to dominate. That's the mindset. I fully expect to. They came out here and did it. Jack, I very intentionally asked every coach we talked to and every player, what's it feel like to be the underdog? Number four team in the country coming in. Does that free you up to play loose? And the response was consistent. They didn't see it that way. They didn't see themselves as underdogs. They anticipated dominating the opponent. They knew what they had to do to win this game. They needed to be more physical. They needed to run the football. They needed to tackle. They needed to make some game-changing plays. And they did all those things. But it starts with their mental approach and their mindset. We saw it all week long in our visits, and it showed up for three hours tonight. Look at this scene. <laughs> this is incredible. And there was so much respect in the air between Coach Sweeney, Coach Freeman. I thought you saw that, felt that handshake and some of those comments they shared after the game. For Notre Dame, they will never forget this night. Knock off number four, Clemson Tigers. A whole lot more to come from South Bend. It's 35 14. Notre Dame getting the job done and advancing to six and three on this season. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. And these fans and students, they may never leave. <laughs> they may never leave that field. 35-14 over Clemson and Zora caught up with Maris Leofow, the Irish linebacker.
Maris, what do you think of this scene? Um, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm lost for words, honestly. Yeah. Between what the defense was able to do, the Tigers have not been shut out in a over a block everything that the offense did. How were you all able to put it all together? Uh, I think just preparation during the week, uh, being detailed on our assignments and doing our job today really helped us to succeed. How are you not going crazy right now? Um, I don't know. I think it's going to hit me a little later, though. Congrats. Thank you so much. Well, this whole night, it began with the blocked punt. That was the initial spark, and his fellow linebacker and Prince Collie returned it for a touchdown. But how did the Irish continue to build the lead from there and pull off this win that they will never forget? Well, first off, how good was that? Maris it's out in amazing. the middle of that. Zora out in the middle of that. I know it. Uh, you know, it was incredible. You said the block punt sets the tone. The defense was unbelievable all night long. You can't think of four, five, six plays that Clemson had that were successful throughout the whole game. They yep. stopped the run. They got after the quarterback. They defended the deep ball time and time again. When they had a chance to make the impactful plays, they cashed in. Ben Morrison, the, the freshman, the interception down in the low red zone, and then the interception for a touchdown, the game-changing plays, Notre Dame made them. I'm with you. So here is how we got to this scene tonight. The blocked punt to begin. Just heard us mention it. Irish come out. It's a wild crowd from the very beginning. And this got him going. Botello with a hand on it. And into the end zone goes Prince Colley. Returns it for a touchdown. Sixth blocked punt for Notre Dame this year. Six. Set the tone for the game, Jack. Game-changing play on special teams. One more time. You block it. You cash it in. The drive before the half was big, too. 11 plays, 10 rushes, a couple quarterback runs. Pine finishes it off. And the pressure from Notre Dame. Tariq Bracey that time. They go to the backup, try to get Klubnik going. Klubnik comes in, pressure in his face immediately. Intercepted by Morrison. The pressure by the defensive line, the pressure by the secondary throughout this game. Adam Alola causing the bad throw. Morrison cashing in on it. Opportunistic on defense all night long. And then the hammer. Audrey Estime in for the touchdown. Over 100 yards he went. Jack, they ran for 268 yards in the ball game. They physically dominated this elite Clemson front seven time and time again throughout this game. Why not one more? <laughs> Benjamin Morrison. And this time, shows off a little bit of that speed. How about that? The guy's got savvy. He's got instincts. Excellent hands. He knows what to do with it after he catches it. I love the scene of his of his, of his his buddies, his classmates, meeting him on the field afterwards. They were as, as excited as he was in a long night for Dabo and the Clemson Tigers. And then Pine, Michael Mayer. Owns that touchdown record all by himself after this one. They kept the pedal down. Run, run, run. And then play action and throw it to that guy, Mayer. Big time. Hey, these fans can run too, can't they? <laughs> they were ready. They were all talking as the score got a little out of hand. They're like, we're storming this field. Yeah. I saw the security starting to gather as if they were going to do something. By the end of it, they just walked out of the way, said, here you go. Night they'll never forget. And Zora Stevenson down on the field with Benjamin Morrison. Benjamin, two interceptions and a pick six. What allowed you to shine when the lights were the brightest? Honestly, I got to give all my credit to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I prayed for this moment since I was a little kid. I text my mom. Uh, in the locker room before the game, I, I found the video. My first ever touchdown was against the Clemson Tigers and back in Pee Wee. So I sent this video, and I was like, Mom, like my first touchdown. And I just felt, I felt like God was like, this is your day. So like from the start of this morning to the end of this night, I just got to give him all the glory. I know coach gets on you hard. Yeah. How does that tough love propel you, though? It, it pushed me to become the best player I could be. Coach Mickens and Freeman, Every single day always pushed me to become the best player I can be and ultimately makes me become a better man. So they just, I'm grateful for both of them. Um, throughout the whole recruitment process, um, I, I've always had a genuine relationship, and it's only grown through through me being here. So, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Enjoy this one. Thank you. Thank you. Zora Benjamin, thank you so much. And you mentioned his dad, NFL career. 
his mom though said that's his best friend that's where he gets his poise from just heard him mention his mom right there what could a win like this do for marcus freeman do for this notre dame football program heading forward well he said it it's confidence you know this is notre dame the, the football tradition of notre dame is unlike any other and they haven't played up to that this year a couple tough losses against teams they should have beaten but i think deep down they have confidence in who they are tommy reese their offensive coordinator told us he said we talk to our guys don't let those two losses impact how we think about ourselves how we see ourselves they see themselves as one of the best teams in the country they see themselves they could be in this mix and they proved it tonight this is the number four team in the country they just beat clemson was in the bowl championship series they're one of the top four and they came here and they took it to them took it to them in all phases they dominated them and uh, there's no doubt it helps their confidence going forward speaking of number four how about Tommy Reese, too? Left the box early to go celebrate. This is what's going on around the country. Tennessee lost to number three, Georgia, pretty handedly. And yet Ohio State had the win game going on. Find a way to win against Northwestern. Clemson down to Notre Dame. They go. In Michigan, they lead Rutgers. And it sounds like a really tight game, an overtime game going on. LSU in Alabama. How about that picture? Well, all those teams that have a zero in their record, they're all just going to slide up. Right. All the teams that have a one are going to slide down. And if there are four teams with a zero, those are the teams that are going to go. And if there's a team with a one, you want to be the best one of the ones. And, right. uh, and we'll see. A lot of football to be played. And typically, if you're going to have a loss, you want it to happen early in the year. Do you see a way in for Clemson, given that this game happened late in the year? And it's not like their schedule has some big time name down the stretch what's disappointing for them is they had it they had it in the palm of their hands they controlled their fate going forward and you lose a game like this all of a sudden it's all about what other people do or don't do and what other people think so they have to control what they can't control they have to win out and make themselves one of those one loss teams and see what happens in this scene all these students, all these fans, they got to play the alma mater at some point. See what's going to happen. You see the band is kind of making their way up into the stands. Maybe they'll play it to everybody who's on the field. Who knows? It's really incredible. A lot of green. You can still see some gold helmets out there. And uh, the energy and the juices is in this place like none other. And coming up later tonight on NBC on Peacock, it's all new Saturday night live in two weeks. Notre Dame returns to South Bend to take on Boston College. Coverage begins 2.30 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. For Jason Garrett, Sora Stevenson, Catherine Tappan, and our entire crew, I'm Jack Collinsworth saying thanks for watching Notre Dame football.